Okay, so really quick, we're just going to review acids and bases. It's been a few days since we talked about this. So really quick, we're just going to review. So first of all, some properties of acids is first of all, they taste sour. I really don't recommend tasting them at home. And you can taste the fruits. Yeah. Those have an acid taste, but I wouldn't recommend you tasting battery acids so on and so forth. Um, acids also conduct electricity. This makes them be weak or strong electrolytes. So like, for example, if we have hydrochloric acid, Hydrochloric acid is going to break apart in water and form hydrogen and chlorine. And these are what are conducting electricity, not HCl together. It is the ions that are conducting electricity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Acids can also react with metals to form hydrogen gas. So this is a lot of times whenever we're doing, like for instance, we did hydrochloric acid and magnesium in the chemical reaction lab. It produced hydrogen gas, and this is why it was very explosive. This is why it would, we it was it had a positive bark test. Remember us doing that test in lab a few months ago? Okay, why? Because it produces hydrogen gas most of the time, and they will change the color of indicators. This is how pH paper works. Based on the various amounts of hydrogen in solution, it'll change the pH paper or whatever indicator we're talking about a specific color. And if you react with a base, they are going to form hydroxides as one of your products. Or they will react with a hydroxide and you will get water and salt as a product. Are you guys done? Yeah. All right. So some more continuing about acids. Acids have a pH smaller than 7. So if we're looking at our pH scale, we have 0 down here. We have 14 down here. And we have 7 smack dab in the middle. 7 is representing neutral. Anything between 0 and 7 is going to be termed an acid. Anything between 7 and 14 is a base. Okay, this bullet I'm not going to stress a whole bunch, but if you react with a carbonate or a bicarbonate, so this would be CO3 or HCO3, you are still going to produce salt, water, but you're also going to be producing carbon dioxide. And so I'm not, that's not going to be a test question, it's just kind of extra information thrown in there. So how do you know if something is an acid? Well, I've already kind of talked about this a little bit, but usually the chemical formula will start with a hydrogen, so this would be HCl, H2S, so on and so forth. So we have HCl, H2SO4, and HNO3. So this is going to be hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. But not water. Water is not an acid. Water is technically neutral. All right, so if we look at our pH scale, basically acids, usually when we're talking about an indicator, they are going to turn them in the red range. And so anywhere from pink to really, really deep red, sometimes a little bit of purple. These are all the in different indicators. But some examples of acids are your lemon juice. Um, wine is actually a little bit acidic because it's made out of grapes. Grapes have acid in them. Um, rain is actually acidic, especially now because we have acid rain. Okay, water is technically supposed to be 7, but most of the time it's not exactly 7. Depends on what part of the country as to if it's an acid or a base.
Okay, acids usually will neutralize bases, and when they neutralize bases, they are going to do a double replacement reaction, which means that my hydrogen of my acid is going to replace the cation in my base, and my cation is now going to be with my, the anion of my acid. So basically it's a double replacement reaction where one of the products is water, one of them is salt. These types of reactions are always going to produce an ionic compound. Usually this ionic compound is a salt, and when I say salt, I'm not talking about table salt. I'm talking about a alkali metal and a halogen. Any of them will be termed a salt. However, we also have to take into account that not all, it's not always going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes you have to make calcium iodide is going to have a different chemical formula than sodium iodide. And so you also have to take some of those into account. All right, now we've reviewed all about acids. So now let's start talking about some bases. When we're talking about base, what am I looking for right off the bat? What chemical formula? Hydroxide. So bases, usually we're looking for a metal with hydroxide. Not always, but for the most part, we're looking at a metal with a hydroxide. Okay, these are going to react with acids again to form salts. They usually taste very bitter. They have a very slippery feel. Okay, so when you wash your hands with soap, it's hard to hold on to things. Why? Because soap is basic. Okay, they also can be strong or weak, just like acids, when you dissolve them in solution. And these, again, will change the indicator based on the different levels of hydroxide. The more hydroxide, the stronger the base, the different color it's going to change. And these are usually going to change different shades of blue. Acids, red. Bases, blue. Sour would be a lemon, and bitter would be, have you ever tasted of milk of magnesia? It's kind of like when you have acid reflux, like Mylanta. Mm -hmm. Have you ever drank Mylanta because your stomach was upset? Or bitter, you actually don't taste bitter quite as much because your taste buds don't recognize it quite as well. But honestly, bitter tasting, bases taste chalky. And they're really thick, and it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to actually make yourself swallow it because it's gross and so thick. And ugh. baking soda. Have you ever tasted baking soda on accident? It's bitter. Yeah, it's well. That's what whitens your teeth. So a lot of times, baking soda is in your toothpaste. Okay, so if we're looking at the pH scale again, our bases are down here in the blue to a little bit purple range. The darker the blue, the more basic your solution is. All right, so this is where, that was all just a little bit of review from the last couple of days, but this is where it's gonna start being new information. So basically, when water, water is not, doesn't just stay water. Water breaks down into hydrogen and hydroxide and then it reforms water. And then it breaks down into hydrogen and hydroxide and then it forms back into water. It's a reversible reaction, it goes back and forth and this is called self-ionization. It ionizes itself and it reforms itself. It ionizes itself and it reforms itself. Water is technically a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. Now, in a perfect world, this would all be happening at the same rate, correct? Okay, so technically, there should be the exact same amount of hydrogen as there is hydroxide because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. In water, there is one hydrogen for every one hydroxide. So as it starts to break apart, these should exist in equal amounts, and we can set it equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And the easy way I remember all of these numbers 
is the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, water is supposed to be 7. So what is the amount times 10 to the negative 7? So that's kind of how I start to remember all these numbers. I kind of correlate them together. Since this correlates to a normal or to a neutral solution, we can actually come up with a equation, which is where the math sets in for today. And we actually call this KW because this is the KW stands for the constant of water. So technically, in water, hydrogen and hydroxide should be equal, and they should both be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Well, if you multiply those together, that is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Concentration is measured in molarity, so that gives us a unit of capital M squared, because you're taking molarity times molarity. Now, do you guys see how there are brackets written here? Do you see how there's brackets written here? These brackets stand for concentration. Concentration <coughs> is molarity. Now, what is molarity? We talked about this last unit. Moles per liter. So whenever we see brackets with something inside of it, this is telling you that we are dealing with concentration, which is measured oops, in molarity. Molarity is basically telling you how strong something is. If it's a really small number, it's really weak. If it's a really big number, it's really strong. A 12 molar hydrochloric acid solution is very, very, very strong. A 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution is very, very diluted. So if you're given an acid and you dissolve it in water, you should be able to determine the amount of hydrogen. If you know how much hydrogen is being added to your water, you can then figure out how much hydroxide you should have. And so this is an equation that we can use to solve for hydrogen and hydroxide based on what information we are given. So this is from the other slide. I recopied it over here, so don't write it down twice. But basically, if our hydrogen concentration is bigger than times 10 to the negative 7, because remember, 10 to the negative 7 is neutral, correct? 7 is neutral. So if it is bigger than that, which means we have more hydrogen, what should our solution then be, acidic or basic? If we have more hydrogen than hydroxide, it should be acidic. Okay, if our hydrogen is less than that, that means our hydroxide is going to be more than that. This solution should be basic. Based on this equation that we see right here, if our hydrogen is going up, then our hydroxide must be going down because no matter what, this ratio has to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. It all correlates to the pH scale. So if our hydrogen is going up, our hydroxide is going down. If our hydroxide is going up, our hydrogen is going down. These two things happen at the same time. If we know one of the pieces of the puzzle, this is only technically a two variable equation. We have hydrogen and we have hydroxide. So if you know hydrogen, you can determine hydroxide. If you know hydroxide, you can determine hydrogen. And we just talked about this. One more thing that I like to add about bases is a lot of times these are called alkaline solutions. Okay, alkaline solution is just another word for telling you that something is basic. Okay, so let's do an example problem as to how to use this equation. I think we're all ready for that, right? So Coke, soda that you drink, it is slightly acidic because it, ha it contains an acid. I think it's phosphoric acid, but I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head. If our hydrogen concentration in our solution is 1 times 10 to the negative fifth, is the solution acidic 
basic or neutral, and what is the hydroxide concentration of the solution. So it gave us our hydrogen concentration, and we need hydroxide. So let's see if we can figure this one out. It told us that our hydrogen concentration equals 1 times 10 to the negative 8. And it is wanting us to solve for hydroxide, correct? Okay. Well, our equation is our hydrogen times our hydroxide equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14. How in the world am I going to solve for my hydroxide? What do I do? How do I get hydroxide all by itself? Divide each side by my hydrogen concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 8. Now, I do not know how many times I've stressed this throughout the year. And this unit is even more so. You are only as good as your calculating skills. So when you are putting scientific notation into your calculator, you need to make a decision and you need to make it right now. If you're going to put it in your calculator as 1 times 10 exponent negative 1 4, then you need to use parentheses. If you don't want to worry about parentheses or you don't think you're going to remember to use parentheses, you need to use your exponent button. And you use your exponent button, you do 1 exponent negative 1 4. Okay, but make a decision and choose 1. As the last couple of days as we've been doing this, most people are getting the wrong answer because they're not putting it in their calculator correctly, not because they don't know how to do it. Okay, so if you put this in your calculator, you do 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1 times 10 to the 8th, you're going to get 1 times 10, 14 plus 8. negative 14 minus a negative 8. Okay, so we're going to get into concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So our hydroxide or hydrogen concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 8. Our hydroxide concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So let's see if we can figure out if this is acidic and or basic. Okay, remember how scientific notation works. Even though 8 is bigger than 6, it also it means that you're moving it over into the negative range, right? So this times 10 to the negative 8 has 7 zeros. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or forget that zero is there. Okay, this times 10 to the negative 6 only has 5 zeros. So which one is bigger? Which one? The negative 6 is bigger, so that means our hydroxide concentration is greater, so is this an acid or a base? Base. Okay, so 8 to 6 is misleading, isn't it? Because everybody thinks, oh, 8 is bigger than 6, that means that's in higher concentration. But remember, when the exponent is negative, the bigger the exponent, the smaller the number. Okay, so when we're talking about pH, it actually is French, and if you translate it, it means hydrogen power or the power of hydrogen. So basically when I'm saying pH, I am telling you how acidic your solution is. To figure out pH, once you know your hydrogen concentration, you just plug it into your calculator. You do your hydrogen concentration, you push log, and then the negative, especially if you don't have a very good calculator. If you have a good calculator, you can put negative log of your hydrogen concentration. Okay, now since logarithms are not our friend, and unless you're currently in Algebra 2 right now and you're talking about logarithms, you probably forgot how to rearrange them. And so I rearranged it for you. Okay, so if you're solving for hydrogen, you have to use the rules associated with your logarithms to rearrange the equation. But I rearranged it for you. Solve for hydrogen, you do 10 exponent negative pH. Now is this scientific notation? No. This is just an exponent, so don't, do you, don't use your scientific notation button on your calculator. Use the exponent button, okay? Okay, in a neutral solution, this should equal 7. 
In an acidic solution, it is going to be greater than times 10 to the negative 7, which means our exponent is technically going to be bigger than 7, correct? If it is in an, it, or less than 7. If it's in a basic solution, then our exponent should be bigger than 7. So this would be anywhere from 10 to the negative 1 to 10 to the negative 7, and this is going to be 10 to the negative 7 to 10 to the negative 4. The bigger the number, the smaller the concentration, correct? You guys see what I'm saying when I'm talking about the bigger the number? But if you remember, I just said that pH is talking about how acidic a solution is. Are we always dealing with acids? No. So if we're dealing with bases, we actually have a different system. We call this pOH. POH is telling you how basic your solution is. Okay? Same equation. Is that not the same identical equation? The only difference is, is here we're plugging in hydroxide because doesn't hydroxide stand for base? Hydrogen stands for acids. Okay? Again, we're not very good at rearranging logarithms. So to find our hydroxide, and that's not a negative, that is a bullet point. I should change the bullet point. Hydroxide is equal to 10 to your negative POH. What does the pH scale go from what to what? 0 to 14. Well, to figure out, if you know pH, you're trying to figure out pOH, it's just a really easy equation. And we just do pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So if you know one piece of the puzzle, this equation is really easy. When I'm given the option, I try to use this equation because you can usually do this one in your head because pH is usually given to you in whole numbers. So most of you can do 14 minus 9 in your head. Okay, so when I'm given the choice, I try to use this one as much as possible. Okay, so let me draw our pH scale down here. We have pH goes from 0 to 14, 7 being in the middle. Here is our acids. Here is our bases. pH is telling you how acidic something is, right? The smaller the number, the more acidic it is, correct? pOH does the exact opposite. It tells you how basic something is. So where do you think my smaller number should be on this scale? If the smaller the number means more acidic, the smaller the number in pOH means the more basic. So on the pOH scale, it does the opposite. So if my solution is right here and it has a pH of 6, it's going to have a pOH of 8. If my solution is right here and it has a pH of 12, it's going to have a pOH of You guys ready to do some example problems? Yes. All right, so this question says, what is the pH of a solution with a hydrogen ion concentration of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 10th? So we have a hydrogen concentration 4.2 times 10 to the negative 10th. And it wants pH. Well, pH is equal to negative log of your hydrogen concentration. So I'm just going to plug that number into here. Negative log 4.2 times 10 to the negative 10th. Again, you are only as good as you are at calculating. So in my calculators, I'm, I have to put it in backwards. So I'm going to do 4.2. I'm going to hit my exponent button. I'm going to do negative 10. Then I hit the log. Then I hit negative. And it's going to give me an answer of 9.4.
So the pH of this solution is 9.4. Is this acidic or basic? Basic. This is a basic solution. Let's go ahead. The question doesn't ask for it, but let's figure out our pOH. So this is pH. If I asked you for my pOH, I would use pH plus pOH equals 14. So to find my pOH, I subtract my pH, which is 9.4. So my pOH is going to equal 4.6. which is still, remember, in pOH land, the smaller the number, the more basic. In pH land, the smaller the number, the more acidic. So no matter how we look at it, this is both coming out as basic. All right, so let's do an example with the opposite now. This question gives you pH, and it is wanting you to find your hydrogen ion concentration. So our pH is 6.3. What is our hydrogen ion concentration? Well, our hydrogen ion, does anybody remember the equation? I rearranged the logarithms for you. Anyone remember it? Right, 10 to the negative pH. So 10 to the negative 6.3. This again, it's tricky to put in the calculator. The majority of you use my calculators. So when you're doing this, do not forget to hit the caret button, not the scientific notation exponent button. So I'm going to hit 10. I'm going to hit my caret button. Then I'm going to hit 6.3. And in my calculators, you have to do the negative sign after the number. And you hit equals, and you get a really big decimal. Do I want the answer as? Do I want that? No, you need to move it to scientific notation. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My answer is going to be 5.01 times 10 to the negative 7. And again, it's concentration, so my unit is polarity. All this unit is, is how good are you at using your calculator? Because most of you cannot do logarithms in your head, and I don't expect you to.